Amen. Now, I want to speak today on the subject, a model father. A model father. In 1909, during a sermon celebrating Mother's Day, a woman by the name Sonora Smart Dodd was inspired to celebrate her father, who was a widower and had raised her and her five siblings. So she petitioned for a day of dad-related sermons before the Spoken Ministerial Alliance of Washington in America. And the first ever Father's Day sermon was preached on June 19th, the year 1910. After these other pastors from other churches followed this example. And then the celebration of Father's Day gained momentum with the endorsements of several presidents. And eventually under President Richard Nixon, Father's Day was made official in 1972. We want to thank God for this woman. May God bless her wherever she is, for coming up with this fantastic idea to celebrate fathers. Ladies and gentlemen, a father is a very unique and a very special person. Why am I saying that? It's because phone conversations are over in 30 seconds. A five-day holiday trip requires only one suitcase. A father is special because when switching through the TV channels, he doesn't stop at every scene of somebody crying. A father is very special because car mechanics will always tell him the truth. A father is special because he can admire movie stars who have great bodies without starving himself to look like them. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, a father is special. A father is very special because if any other man shows up at a party in the same outfit, they just might become lifelong friends. <laughs> a father is very special. He's special because the occasional well-rendered belch is expected. It is great, ladies and gentlemen, to be a man. And it is rewarding to be a father. Yet, Fatherhood, ladies and gentlemen, has not been celebrated as it should. Father's Day doesn't seem to have a very high priority in our world today. As a matter of fact, Mother's Day is more popular than Father's Day. Mother's Day is full of pomp and color. We talk about it everywhere. Mother's Day is on social media. You can't miss it. It's on radio, TV. You go to the malls, you can just see it splashed all over the place. But Father's Day is always a low-key day. You will agree with me that some memes cast fathers as a family idiot who can figure out how to take care of the kids alone. He can't shop, he can't cook, he can't clean the house, or even help with the homework. Every time we celebrate Mother's Day, there is this photo that does rounds on social media of a woman carrying a child, carrying luggages, 
on her head, and she even carries her husband on her back. <laughs> and people say the strength of a woman. Our culture presents fathers as nothing more than spam, spam donors. And that is why in courtrooms, divorced fathers hardly have a fighting chance of obtaining custody of their children. In many cases, the mother always has an upper hand. The enemy also has emasculated many fathers. That's why we have a lot of deadbeats, deadbeat dads in our world today. They have abdicated their responsibilities, and as a result, children are growing up in unbalanced and dysfunctional homes. Scores go to bed without their fathers in the house. Many are growing up what? because of the absence of a father figure in their lives. Ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, this has led to strained father-child relationships. A lot of people in our world today, in this country, in this city, and even in this church, have issues with their fathers. Most of them, their father was absent. The father was abusive. The father was alcoholic. The father was unreasonable, which contributed to communication breakdown between them and their fathers. As we are talking right now, some of them don't even talk. As we are talking right now, some of them don't even see each other eye to eye. And some don't care. Some don't even want to know where their fathers are. But ladies and gentlemen, despite all these challenges surrounding fatherhood, we need to come to a place where we choose to celebrate fathers. Despite all these challenges facing many fathers in our world today, it doesn't mean that we should neglect our fathers. It doesn't mean that we should push the father away. It is still very, very important for us to take time to celebrate fathers, support fathers, pray for fathers, be there for our fathers, because I can tell you for free that being a father is not easy. Fathers are still very, very important. They play a very vital role in our society today. The first four out of the Ten Commandments deal with our relationship with God. The remaining six instruct us about our relationship with our fellow human beings. The first of these human relationship commands reads, Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. That is according to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. This is a command and God is commanding us to honor our fathers and our mothers. Now, it is a command with a promise attached to it. That when you honor your father and when you honor your mother, and because today is Father's Day, allow me not to talk about the mother. When you honor your father, the Bible says that you will live for long in the land which the Lord is giving you. So to honor the father is a command from God. It is not a suggestion. It is not a great idea. It is a command from God. Touch your neighbor and tell them, it is a command from God. Now, the scripture does not say, honor a father who is perfect. Talk to me, somebody. The scripture does not say, honor a father who is rich. The scripture does not say honor a father who is educated. The scripture does not say honor a father 
who is wealthy. It just says, honor your father regardless of what he does, regardless of where he is. The Bible commands us to honor fathers. And that's why today we want to take time and celebrate every father, those who are here, those who are watching, those who are listening, we want to celebrate you and we want to honor you because we want to obey God's command. Help me put your hands together. Let's celebrate and honor the fathers who are here. And so we want to look at the model father and we have one in the Bible that I want us to consider today. And this father is found in Luke chapter 15 from verse 20 to verse 32. Luke chapter 15 from verse 20 to verse 32. It is a story that we all know and is a very, very powerful story that was given by Jesus about a father who had two sons and one of the sons said to the father, give me a portion of the goods that belong to me. He said, in other words, give me my inheritance. I want to go out there and be on my own and see what I can do with my life. And so you know the story, he left the father's home with his inheritance, traveled to a far country, and the Bible said, or the Bible says that in that far country he squandered his inheritance with riotous living. The guy was reckless, chopped the wealth, chopped the money that the father gave him. And to a point, he became poor. And when he became poor, he started looking for jobs. And he was employed somewhere. And where he was employed, even the employer was not giving him food. If you're working somewhere in an office and they offer you lunch, you should thank God. There are employers who are heartless. You can't even make a cup of tea in the office. Even, even water, you can't get it. You buy and drink it. So this employer was heartless, didn't provide anything for this boy. And so the boy had to feed the swines and eat whatever he was feeding the swines with. So he got to a place where he said, no, I cannot live like this. I have to go home. I have to go back to my father. So verse 20, we pick up the story from there. And the Bible says from verse 20, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Hey! What a father. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this son, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Verse 25, now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And so he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, bro, your bro has come. And because he has received himself and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. And so he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I've been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you've never given me a young God that I might make merry with my friends. <laughs> And verse 30, but as soon as this son of yours came who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, 
you killed the fatted cow for him. But the father said, son, you are always with me. And all that I have, include, including the fatted calf, <laughs> is yours. Verse 32. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and he is found. Thank you. Now we want to look at five qualities from this story of a model father. Number one, this father encouraged individual autonomy. He encouraged individual autonomy. You see, when the young son or the younger son asked for his inheritance, he didn't force him to stay like the elder brother. He didn't preach a doomsday sermon as he divided his inheritance. He just gave his son what he needed, what he wanted, and he bid him farewell. As much as his heart was broken, as much as he was sad that his son was leaving him, he, he did not force him to be like his elder brother. He did not manipulate him to be like his elder brother. He encouraged individual autonomy. He said, this is what you want. I'm going to let you, you know, pursue your heart's desire. You see, we always crucify this boy. But this boy was daring. This boy was trying something new. This boy wanted to go out there and establish himself as a wealthy businessman. He wanted to see if he can stand on his own feet. And I think we need to applaud this boy because of the courage that he had. He just didn't want to stay in the comfort zone of his father's shadow. He wanted to go out there and see what he can do with what he had acquired from his father. And so the father encouraged individual autonomy. He didn't want to manipulate him. He didn't want to control him. He didn't want even him to be like the brother. Do you know that a great father sometimes will push you so that you can stand on your own feet. A great father will encourage you to go out there and be on your own and see what you can make out of life as an individual. But you know mothers are very different. Mothers tend to hold on to their sons, especially their sons, way too much. They aren't willing to let go of their sons to step out there, face the reality of life and deal with it. I remember I was watching this movie of a single mother and this single mother noticed that the son was falling in love with another lady and that lady's kind of was taking the son away from her. And so the lady faked, the mother of this son actually faked sickness. She sent a message to the son and told the message, I have just been diagnosed with cancer. And the doctor says, I have few days to live. But she was doing this so that she can manipulate the son. So that the son can spend more time with her. Sometimes mothers hold on to their children too much. Especially single mothers who have sons. You see the way they describe their sons? My sunshine. <laughs> My little man. Some even say, my boo. Now when this boy grows up and begins to show affection to another lady, if the lady or if the mother is not mature enough, that relationship will not survive. 
she will kill it. Hmm. But the f a good father will encourage individual autonomy. And that's what we are seeing in the life of this father in Luke chapter 15. You see, this father evaluated each of his children for who they were as individuals. He knew their strengths and weaknesses. And he was prepared to let this young man go and become an adult out there. A model father, ladies and gentlemen, is willing to let go and let a child exercise autonomy. Secondly, a model father that we see in this story is able to give his children space to learn. So this father gave this boy space to learn. He gave him space to learn. You see, this father was wealthy. He had a lot of money and servants at his disposal. He could have assigned one of his servants to shadow the rebellious kid, carrying various disguises, going wherever he went, keeping an eye on him, and then report back what was going on in his life. He would have hired people to track every step that this boy took. He could have made sure that these people follow him and even try and influence his decisions so that he doesn't squander the wealth that he had received from him. He could have hired people to monitor the life of his boy from the day he left his house. I don't know if those days they had phones. If they did, maybe he could have hired the service provider or given them money to record all his conversations like a politician in this country. <laughs> you know him, isn't it? Or he will have sent more money when this boy became broke or sent a chariot to bring him back home before he started looking for a job. But he knew this boy needs to learn some things on his own. That's why he was not very, very quick to rescue him prematurely, he gave him space to learn. Sometimes you don't really know what you have acquired until you're thrown into the deep end. Sometimes you don't really know what you have inside of you until you're told, bye, you have to go and be on your own. The father gave him space. He said, this is what you want. I'm going to release you. I'm going to let you go. I'll not hire bodyguards for you. I'll not hire a counselor for you. I have done a very good job raising you up. I want you to go and put into practice what I have inculcated in your life. He gave him space to learn. And when this boy went out there, there are several lessons that he learned. And I'll mention some of them to you. Some of the lessons that he learned, number one, he discovered that there are a lot of fake friends out there. The world is full of fake friends who will only be around you when you have money. Because as long as he was rich, the Bible says, he spent all that he had in riotous living. So I believe there were people around him spending money with him and they called themselves friends. So he learned that this world is full of fake friends. He also learned another lesson, which is a spend thrift can never build an empire. He discovered that success doesn't happen because of frivolous spending, but through wise investments. He realized that wealth creation is a function of wise investment. All these are lessons that he learned. He learned that receiving a fortune doesn't guarantee prosperity or posterity. He learned that it is dangerous to have money without character because you will waste it. 
He also learned that no one respects you when you have nothing. Can I go deeper? Tell your neighbor, it's the reality of life. People will never respect poor people. The people who are respected are the people who are rich. Last week I was reading a story of a rich man, a billionaire. When he died, nobody even attended the funeral, but still the press were trying to cover the funeral. And they were not even invited. And they were forcing themselves to cover the event. A funeral service that only had, I think, 20 or 40 people in attendance. Was it 20? 20! A billionaire, and they're still trying to take photos. And poor people have crowds, and nobody covers their, their events. <laughs> it's the reality of life. When this boy was rich, having money, showing people I have money, he has bling bling, you know, he has money, people gravitated towards him. The moment he became poor, even the guy that hired him didn't care. Maybe he said, you know, my father is rich. But he looked at him and said, if your father is rich, look at you. Why are you, looking, why are you searching for a job? He never respected him. And that's why he told him, I'll not even feed you. You will eat what the swines are eating. Oh, I pray that may God bless you. Amen. I say, may God bless you. Amen. With money. Amen. With houses. Amen. With cars. Amen. With lands. Amen. May you be a high flyer in Jesus' name. Amen. So that people can respect you. And some of you come from families that are poor, and you can agree with me. Even when they're asking for opinions, when you lift your hand, they say, please. <laughs> Let's finish the meeting first, then. You will talk to brother so-and-so, then he will come and tell us what you are trying to say. It's the sad reality. Isn't it true? Those are some of the things this, this brother learned. He also learned that change begins with you. That's what the Bible says. He came back to his senses and he said, no, I can't be here. I'd rather, be, I'd rather be a servant in my father's house than be a son out here begging for food, for bread. He came back to his senses. Change begins with you. Hallelujah. Even breaking addictions begins with you. Those are some of the lessons he learned. We can take you for rehab and you come back and still drink. The same day, the same day you are discharged, you drink. Change begins with you. He came back to his senses. So he learned all this because his father gave him space for growth. He learned by experience what the father taught him theoretically. And I want to celebrate fathers who are here because you have allowed your sons to grow. You have allowed your daughters to grow. And they came and they told you, uh, I want to go to look for a job, I want to go and start living alone, and you took your bag and a few of your clothes and left your father, said bye, and he said, I wish you well. We celebrate those fathers today. <laughs> Hallelujah. We celebrate them today. But mothers sometimes, can mother excessively until they interfere with the growth of a child. They can deny the child the opportunity to learn vital skills about life. Sometimes they can mama too much. The boy has left, but the mother is still calling, have you eaten? Have you slept for five to eight hours? When they meet, the mother is concerned. Whoa, lo, 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 you've really lost weight. Are you eating? Uh, 
Huh? And the father is saying, if the guy is angry, he will eat. <laughs> it is his stomach now. And the mother said, no, 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 he will die. We need to recall him. He's dying. Look at him. He's dying. And sometimes mothers can put pressure on the sons. And a 40-year-old leaves his own house to come back home. Because mama has... And the father says, no, 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 he has to go. He has now become a man. He has to be in his own house. We need to give him space to grow and learn. A model father will always give his children space to grow and to learn vital, vital principles about life. When I was leaving home, I told my parents, I want to go and see what I can do with my life. I feel like God has called me, and I want to go to a Bible school. Oh, my dad was very excited. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. I've been waiting to hear that from you. Yes, now you're becoming a man. And my mother was concerned. He was, he was wondering, now you, will you survive? <laughs> will you make it? Are you sure? I said, no, I'm sure, I'm sure. And my dad was telling me, go, go, go. In fact, if you want me to, talk, to come and talk to the principal of the Bible school you want to go to, let me, let me know. I'll come and talk to him on your behalf. Hey, at some point I say, hey, you mean, dad, you really want me to go, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he wanted to give me space to grow and to learn. That's why I'm here today. So I'm here today. So a model father will always push you to the deep end. All right? And let you swim because he knows you can never drown. And he will not rush and come and rescue you prematurely. He will let you experience life. He will want you to experience what failure tastes like. Disappointment tastes like. Pain test like so that it can develop some things inside of you I had a story of another woman who was not happy because the father told the son leave go look you have beards and you're still here go <laughs> people who have beards they don't live with their parents and the mother was not happy, she was depressed. She was saying, how can you send our son away? But the father said, the man has become of age. He has to go. Mamas, don't mama too much. Let them go. The guy has beards. When your husband is shaving, he's also shaving on the other end. a woman next to you and just tell her, let him go, let him go. They didn't hear you. Come on, shout at them and tell them, let him go. A model father will let you learn from experience the lessons he taught you theoretically. Number three, this father expressed passionate love. He expressed passionate love. You know, men have been known to be non-expressive when it comes to emotions. We hide our emotions, isn't it? We rarely express... Men, am I saying the truth? We rarely express tender emotions. Do you know there are some fathers who never hug? Some don't even use loving words. Some don't even touch. They never touch. Some, some, some are touchy, but some, they never touch. It's just, hi, hi. You're around. <laughs> yes, I'm around. <laughs> so, have you seen your mother? <laughs> Yeah, she's in the kitchen. Go and 
see your mother. That's it. So some are very emotionally disconnected from their children. But this father was special. He expressed or he expressed his love passionately, you know, in a way that will make a lot of men in our generation, especially those who are in the African setup, blush. Look at him. The Bible says in verse 20, he had compassion. He ran. This is a guy that left the house, the home, went and squandered his wealth. He saw him and he had compassion and he ran and he fell on his neck or embraced him. And then, hey! That will make us men in our African, our African tradition to really blush. Say, hey, that's too much. What kind of a father is that? Hey, what is he doing? He has become a woman now, or what? But this father expressed love to his son. Hmm. Some of you, if your father did that to you today, you will turn blue. <laughs> Grabbing you, giving you a giant hug, and kissing you, and squeezing you. You will turn blue, isn't it? You will just melt. You just say, Dad, stay there. <laughs> stay there, Dad, stay there. But I want to talk to all the fathers who are here that your children need your love. I need to say that again. Your children need your love. They need to know that you love them deeply. And you will do anything within your power to look out for them, to protect them, to cherish them, to express your love and care to them. You see, you might not be very extravagant with your love, the way this father was, but it is important to express your love to your children because it makes a very huge difference in their lives. When my father was alive, we used to hug, but the hug was short-lived. Boom, boom. <laughs> Yeah. If you are not very keen, you will not even notice we have hugged. <laughs> boom, boom. Quick, fast, and it's done. You know, and I appreciate him for that. At least it was something for me. At least it was something for me. But their fathers, there is nothing like that. Yeah. You don't know when they are happy. You don't know when they are sad. They are on one straight line. Even when you come, you're excited. Da, 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 da. Mm. Oh. Have you told your mother? <laughs> but your children, they need to know that you also love them. I wish you knew how your son is longing for that hug from you. He wants to hear those words from you. Telling him, I love you. Your daughter needs to hear those words from you. Telling you, I love you. They know you do, but they want you to express it. All right? Last week I went into my daughter's room. She was doing homework. And I just felt like spoiling her with words. I told her, man, you know, I really love you. You're very special to me. And she started melting. <laughs> and she said, Dad, please don't do that. Don't do that to me. Don't do that. And I kept on going on. And she said, please, you'll make me cry. I'm becoming emotional right now. And I'm doing my homework. Please get out, get out, get out. <laughs> they feel it. They feel it. When I grab my son and I hug him, and I, I could tell he's taking it in, and he feels very special. All right? Of course, sometimes they don't appreciate our kisses, especially my kisses. 
Because sometimes I kiss them and I say, oh, your beards are poking us. But I, t- I tell them I'm trying to express my love to you. I want to let you know that I love you as your father. All right? And I'm there for you as your father. So your children need to see you express your love to them. It is not something from the Western countries. It is from the Bible. It's from the Bible. I'm preaching the Bible. I'm not preaching American culture. I'm preaching the Bible. You don't say, in video was Zoom. No. It's the Bible. Tell your neighbor for me, it's the Bible we are talking about. It's the Bible. He, he, he fell on his neck, had compassion, grabbed him, squeezed him, kissed him, expressed his love to his son. When we do this to our sons, they will understand what love is. If we do this to our daughters, our daughters will understand what love is. I want to tell you fathers here, some of our daughters are messing because they don't know what love is. And so here, he, here comes smooth operator. Smooth operator crosses their path and begins to talk to them and begins to show them tender love and care. TLC. And they melt. And before you know it, their lives are messed up. It is you as a father that redefines love in the lives of your children. So that when you tell your children, or when us pastors tell your children in church that your heavenly father loves you, they will understand. They will understand what we are talking about. When you tell them God loves you, he's your father, you can come to him, you can pray to him, you can seek his guidance over your life, they will understand that language. Because you as an earthly father represents the heavenly father in their lives. So I request you fathers, let's love our children. A model father expresses passionate love to his children despite their mistakes. Number four, what do we see in this story? He forgave him. He didn't just love him, but he also forgave him. I mean, the guy had done terrible mistakes, but he forgave him. When the prodigal son came back home, you know, (coughs) his brother was mad at him. He met a cold, cynical, and self-righteous brother who was scornful of his profligacy. It simply means reckless extravagance. So sometimes I use big words to show you how intelligent I am, and then we just move on. (laughs) Tell your neighbor, profligacy. Pronounce it again, profligacy. It simply means reckless extravagance. He was not happy for him because this guy went out there and he was just reckless. Reckless. Wasting money. Wasting his wealth. Wasting his inheritance. So he was not happy that he has come back. Maybe he thought he has come back for more. He was not ready to forgive him. He was not ready to accept him. The elder brother was bitter. He wanted his brother to pay for his sins. I want you to know that not everybody is happy when you make a glorious comeback. Let me say that again. Not everybody is happy when you make a glorious comeback. Some people are not happy. They are bitter. Because they think you should pay. Pay for your sins. You should suffer. But thank God for this father. When the boy came back, he covered the boy. In fact, the Bible says when he saw him from a distance. So that means he's been expecting him to come back. He saw him at a distance or from a distance. And then he ran out to him. He embraced him. He kissed him. 
and he forgave him. Of course, the son asked for forgiveness. You will not just be forgiven. You must ask for forgiveness. The son said, I'm not worthy to be called a son. Make me as one of the servants. So he waited. He was like waiting for him to come. He expected him to come. And when he saw him from a distance, he ran after him. This father is very wise. He acknowledged the faithfulness of the older brother. He told him, relax, everything here is yours, so take it easy. But also, he went ahead and forgave the rebellious son. I want to ask you, what would you have done if this was your child? Gave him money, gave him wealth, gave him a piece of land, gave him a car, gave him a house, then squandered all this. And some of the things you gave him are things that you worked for years, you toiled to acquire. Being a preacher, I'm thinking if I was the one, maybe, I could have started preaching to that son. And the title of the message could have been, I told you so. <laughs> or the wages of sin is death. Or my subtopic is, he's back, but with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but this father was different. He avoided a vindictive attitude. Why? Because the guy had learned his lesson. He came back broken. He came back remorseful. He didn't even want to be called a son in the home. He just wanted to be a servant in this house. And forgiveness flowed out of his heart like a mighty river towards him. Fathers who are here, fathers who are watching, fathers who are listening to this sermon, I want to plead with you to forgive your children. Some of them did terrible things. Some of them stole from you. Forgive them. Some of them were very rebellious. Even after you counseling them several times, I want to plead with you, please, forgive them. Some of these beautiful ladies here, were very difficult to tame. And they broke your heart. They did something you never thought they would do. And you've carried that bitterness in your heart, in your spirit. I want to ask you to forgive them. Be like this father. He forgave his son. Forgive them. And let them come back home. Tell them you can come back. Tell them this is your home. This is your house. I'm your father. And regardless of what you did, I choose to forgive you. Because there are children who are told, never come back here again. I don't want to see you. I don't want to see your children. I don't want to see anything. About go, 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 go. But I believe this Father's Day is a day of reconciliation. Amen. I mean, what this boy did was very terrible, but the father forgive, forgave him. His father actually forgave him. So regardless of what your children have done, lied on you, betrayed you, hurt you, disappointed you, let you down, whatever they did, I plead with you, by the mercies of God, forgive them and tell them it's time to come back home. Lastly, number five. What did he do? He celebrated his return. This is a model father. He didn't just love him. He didn't just forgive him. He didn't just give him space to grow. He didn't just allow him to enjoy autonomy, but he also celebrated his return. When the boy came back home, there was a party. But before the party, he decided to give the boy a facelift. 
Mimi nakwambia huyo kijana alikuwa amechapa. He said we have to change your dressing. We have to give you a first lift before we have a party. So he gave him the best robe. Somebody say the best robe. What does this stand for? It stands for honor. Maybe the guy came back with tattered clothes. He said you have to change your clothes. He gave him a ring. What does a ring stand for? Authority. And then he gave him sandals or shoes. They signify that he is a son in the home. You are not a slave, you are not a servant, you are a son. So these are the shoes. Wear these shoes as a son in this home. Also, shoes represent reconciliation. Because the Bible says that our feet should be showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We should have shoes showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So shoes also represented reconciliation. That whatever was dividing us has been obliterated. No more animosity. No more hatred. No more hostility. No more bitterness. I've accepted you as a son. I've forgiven you. I've accepted you back as a son in my house. And then after that, he prepared a banquet. It was a feast to make merry. In verse 24 of Luke chapter 15, he says, For this, my son, I love this father. He didn't just say, for this son, for this boy, for this crooked boy. He says, for this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. So he threw a party and there was music and there was dancing and the whole homestead was in a carnival mood. The workers were given an off. No working today. Today is a day of celebration because my son who was dead is alive. My son who was lost has been found. Again, if it were you, I don't know what you could have done. Maybe you could have said, let me, check him, let, let me check him out first before throwing a party for him, isn't it? Maybe he has not really changed. He has come to steal from me again. You will have waited to see if he has really changed or not because you are not ready for him to break your heart again. Or maybe you could have given him a job to see if he can really prove himself before you accept him back. But this father challenges us. He didn't put a lot of hurdles for his son to earn his trust again. He quickly forgives him, accepts him back, and he celebrates his return. As a father, if you're here, as God blesses you, throw parties for your children. Call them and tell them, it's on me. The goat is on me. The chicken is on me. Or a cup of tea is on me. Call them and throw a party. And celebrate each of the children that God has given unto you. Celebrate their milestones. It doesn't have to be food. You can send a message and say, I'm proud of you, son. I'm proud of you, my daughter. Celebrate their milestones. When they get children, celebrate with them. My father loved his grandchildren like crazy. One day he picked a call. He picked his phone, rather, and he called me. And he told me, um, bring all my grandchildren at home. Umeskia. I said yes. And then he disconnected the phone. <laughs> and we had to organize for them to go. And he stayed with them for a week or two. Was it two weeks or one week? I can't even remember. And they came back and they were very happy. He was playing with them every now and then, cooking for them, doing stuff for them. I mean, it was very nice. They came back with so many stories. 
Celebrate your children. Celebrate your grandchildren. Have wonderful times with them. Don't just be this disciplinarian 24-7. Even when you have not spoken, they are just suspects. <laughs> have I done something wrong or what? Celebrate your children. Be proud of your sons. All right? Every milestone in their lives, try and celebrate, you know, with them. It doesn't have to be expensive. Even an SMS just saying, proud of you, son. Proud of you, my daughter. It will go a long way. You know, I was preparing this message. I said, I want to commit myself to my children to celebrate every milestone in their lives. I pray that God may give me long life. That even when my daughter is, and I'm able, my daughter is in the hospital about to deliver, I want to be there. When the wife of my son about to deliver, I want to be there. And celebrate with them. When they are graduating, I want to be there. When they are getting married, I want to be there. When they are going for honeymoon, I want to say bye. <laughs> Some of you thought I'll say, I want to be there, isn't it? <laughs> I want to celebrate my grandchildren. I want to be there for them. This man threw a party. This father threw a party for his children. Once in a while, my dad could call us or call me and say, son, I've been, I have a lot of chickens here and I'm seeing there's one here that you need to eat. When are you coming? Please organize and come. I have a chicken for you and your family. And when I go, they slaughter the chicken. They prepare a sumptuous meal. And we eat and we celebrate. I even remember my mother-in-law. She used to call me sometimes. I said, hey, my son in love. That's how she used to call me. My son in love. There is a goat here. The way I'm looking at it, it needs to die. And I want you to be the one eating that goat. Celebrate with your children milestones that they are making in their lives. It goes a long way. Children will remember you more because of the positive words and the positive things that you spoke over their lives or you did in their lives. They will remember more as an encourager, as the lifter of their souls, as someone that celebrated every milestone in their lives. Be a model father like this father and celebrate your children. Ladies and gentlemen, as we celebrate Father's Day today, my prayer is that all these five qualities will be deeply entrenched in every father or aspiring father in this house so that our children can be proud of us as fathers. May God bless you and happy Father's Day.